So this morning I'm going to show you how I milk my Nigerian dwarf goat. I'm packing my stuff. I have um, a thermos here with hot soapy water, which I use uh, peppermint castile soap. Um, just a light mix. And then I give her a good wash and a good massage. And she's very full this morning. Yes, baby. She's been separated from her kids for about 12 hours. Her kids are over there crying, but they're fine. They're seven weeks old, and they've been separated since they were four weeks old overnight. <clears throat> so I make sure my pump is pumped up to about 10, which you can see on here and make sure the valves are closed in order to pump it up. So you need little valves on your line, so that really helps a lot. And I use a little cup to um, squirt the first milk into. This is the milk that's been sitting in the teat overnight, so it's the most likely to give a goaty flavor. Plus you can look and see if there's any lumps or anything in there that shouldn't be there. And you just take your lines and put it on the teat and then you turn the valve to start the milk flowing. And check your thing again, make sure um, it's staying at about 10, which it is. And take the second one, put it on there, and get the milk started. And there we go, we're off and running. And you only need to pump it a little bit because you can just hold it at about a 10 and it will just flow until it's done. If it starts dropping below 10, I just give it a couple pumps. Um, you don't want too much pressure, just enough to keep the milk flowing. <clears throat> I have this uh, milk stand up, down awfully low, but uh, that's because the hay is built up over the winter. And I have a very small barn that I have a um, and a really small milking area but this works keeps everybody out of here while I'm milking and they line up out there waiting to be milked and this milk stand itself folds up against the wall so it gives us more room once we finish milking we can put it back up so sometimes I give her a couple little bumps to check the pressure again. Down below. And, uh, later in this video, I'll show you about my little um, inflations, which are very comfortable for my does. I don't use standard inflations that come with these kind of milkers, or just, I don't use just the syringes I actually put silicone inflations inside them to make them more comfortable. So when I see the milk stop running and it starts just dripping, then I know uh, she's finished except for what she's holding back for her kids and I let her hold back a little bit for her kids. And then I push, oops, fell off, but I push um, the button to release the pressure and then I gently pull them off and uh, I let it get too low and it just fell off, which is fine. So, this is what I got for this morning, which is a nice haul. Yay. Thank you, Leela. Girl. And then I just um, go to the next dough and milk her and usually have enough room in these jars to put two <clears throat> does milk in there. <clears throat> and then I don't milk out the rest because I leave a little bit for her to feed her kids who are waiting to come out. And this girl takes a million years to eat her grain, so we just let her finish eating before we take her out because she needs the grain to make lots of milk. So that's it for this part. Last but not least, I want to show how I carry my milker. Um, I use one of these cheap uh, lunchbox things. And... Um, 
These are my inflations, my quart jars, and I put, I use a little thermos to carry out my hot soapy water and a clean washcloth for each dough that I'm going to milk. Uh, I can usually do two doughs um, with this. Uh, if it gets to three, depending on how much milk they have, then I have to pour off milk and um, have dry jars that I can use, clean jars. Um, these are ice packs I put in here so that it keeps the milk cool until I get back up to the house. And that's real important, especially in the summertime. I don't have to hurry so much to get the milk back inside. So that works real well. And these are my my jars that I'm going to empty and then I take the whole thing take the pump off and take all the hoses off and I put it into a bucket of hot soapy water with um, I use Dawn soap and um, run the water through them real well and then about once every week or two I run vinegar through the lines and I also have a a little brush cleaner that I use to run through the the lines make sure they stay nice and clean this pump is made by uh, Minivac, uh, sold by Henry Milker. It's really the best price at the Henry Milker site, believe it or not. Let's see, it says right on there, Minivac. Um, this one's the best quality of any. I've actually ordered cheaper ones, and they turned out to be crap. So, uh, And another thing that's real important is when you take your line off of this, um, you need to break the seal, otherwise you can break this thing off if you're wiggling it off and uh, ask me how I know. I actually did that myself, broke it, and had to order another one. So um, these are about $50, and they're very nice quality and real easy on your hands. This is my assembled milker. Just finished milking. Um, they have little uh, valves on here, which are very helpful on the lines, so that when you uh, pump it up, you can put it up on the dose teat and release the pressure so that it will begin to suck without having to hold it up there and pump up and all that kind of stuff. And then um, I used to have Henry Milker tops, but I didn't like them because they leaked air. Um, the little but they were hard to get to seal properly, so I made these from canning tops, and um, those work real well. Also, one more tip. Um, I used to use regular tubing, half for years, um, quarter inch inner diameter tubing, but I ordered some silicone tubing, that's what this is, and it's so much easier to use because it's super flexible and it's really much easier to get underneath um, the dough to milk and it doesn't um, kink and, you know, it's just way better. So, but it's more expensive and you have to order it online. It's quarter inch inner diameter, and uh, I think it is seven sixteenths outer diameter. Yep, that's it. And then I carry it in that thing. Okay, forgot to show you this. Um, this is how I do my uh, inflations. I buy these silicone inflations. These are small silicone goat inflations sold um, by a couple different sites. I think uh, parts department is where I ordered it from, but there's uh, a couple of sites that have them. You get the small goat inflations. I'm going to try and show you how to do this with one hand because uh, I... <laughs> okay, here we go. So it goes in there like that. Um, the syringe, you have to cut down the edge so that it will fit, so that this top will fit on there. And let's see, there we go. Pushed it down in there, and that's it. It just sits down in the syringe and it has a nice uh, small enough hole for the doughs and it'll just sort of suck it in there without blowing out the, her teeth or uh, hurting her in any way. So um, that's it.